On these first Fridays of the month, um, I take this opportunity to do a little teaching on healing um, during my homily. And recently, I published a book um, called The Virtue of Mercy and Forgiveness, um, Keys to Healing a Broken Heart. Um, there's actually some copies downstairs, and yes, I will sign them if you, if you get them afterwards. Um, this book has um, a lot of different things in it, and the um, second chapter in particular is what I want to focus on today. And the basic idea is that a lot of times we receive healing, um, but then we fall right back into what we healed from. So sometimes we might um, come to a place where we forgive someone, and then a couple days later, everything they did comes back to our mind, and we're just not forgiving them anymore. Or, you know, we may be struggling with a particular area of our life or a particular sin. Um, we're able to co overcome it for a short time, maybe after going to confession, um, which is a sacrament of healing. And then a few days later, we're right back in the sin. Um, I see this pattern a lot. I've seen it in my own life. Um, I've seen it in the lives of those that I've tried to help. And what I want to propose this afternoon is that if you um, come to understand and practice the virtues in your life, if you come to receive um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and if you come to live out um, the Beatitudes, that this actually gives you a strong foundation to not only receive healing, but to integrate it into your life, um, to actually um, change and actually begin to live a new life. And so that's what I'd like to talk with you a little bit about um, today. Um, you know, when you think of virtue, um, virtue is a word that we still use, but it's, it's often um, forgotten. And a virtue is, is really important to understand what it is. Um, a virtue is actually an acquired disposition to act in a right, good, and praiseworthy way. Um, it makes your actions good. It makes you good. And the goal of virtue is not just to act in these ways sometimes, but it's for the virtue to become part of who you are, to be able to actually live out of the virtue. Um, for example, if you practice the virtue of patience, um, if you get better at it, if it becomes part of you, then when you face a challenging situation in your life, um, patience will just come out of you. It's, it's part of you. And that's the actual goal. Um, we talk about the theological virtues, faith, hope, and love. And we talk about the cardinal virtues, prudence, courage, justice, self-control. And we talk about the moral virtues. Um, again, fortitude, friendship, generosity, gentleness, judgment, justice, magnanimity, magnificence, mercy, self-control, truthfulness, wittiness. Um, pr pr practicing the virtues and allowing them to become who, part of who you are um, gives you a foundation um, to receive the healing that God wants to give you and then to integrate it into your life. So that's one part. Um, another part, which maybe is a little bit easier, is that um, God also wants to give us his gifts. Um, I'm talking right now just about the Isaiah gifts, um, gifts like wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, courage, piety, um, fear of the Lord. Um, the gifts are something you receive, something that you ask God for. Um, they're given to you, and they allow you to um, promptly obey the Holy Spirit. Um, they're actually perfected virtues, um, St. Thomas Aquinas says. Um, we receive this perfected virtue of wisdom or knowledge or understanding. And um, so these are things we can pray for. We can ask the Holy Spirit to give us these. We can ask God to give us these, and he, he wants to give them to us. Um, the fruits are all also similar, but, but a little bit different. You know, when you have a relationship with someone, um, there's fruit. A lot of times with a husband and wife, the fruit of that marriage is, is children. 
And it's the same with God. When we're in relationship with God, and there's fruit that's poured out into our lives. And um, St. Paul talks about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, perseverance, goodness, generosity, meekness, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and chastity. And so there's 12 fruits. And again, if we are in relationship with God, if we're praying, if we're um, giving our lives to him, if we're letting him speak to us, letting him lead us, um, we start to experience these just simply as a fruit of that relationship with God. And finally, the Beatitudes. Um, we, we all know the Beatitudes. Um, the poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the clean of heart, the peacemakers. Um, this is the way in which Jesus calls us to live, um, to live out um, the Beatitudes. And a lot of times we need to pray that we might be able to do that as well. So you have virtues, you have gifts, you have fruits, and you have beatitudes. And um, actually, they kind of, there's a lot of crossover. So let's say you're struggling with um, the virtue of hope. Well, you can practice the virtue of hope. Um, you can learn to have a more positive attitude, um, to have a more hopeful outlook on the future. You can also pray for the gift of hope, that God would just give you the gift of hope, that he would pour out that gift into your life. And as you trust God, as you are in relationship with him, as you allow him to lead you and guide you and bless you, um, hope becomes part of, of your relationship. Um, it's a fruit of that relationship. So although I put them into different categories here, um, for each one, you could say it's actually a virtue. It's actually a gift. It's actually a fruit. And I think that's a good way to think of it. I think it opens up something for us. Because when we're really struggling, um, we can pray for it. And um, when we're really struggling, we can go back to our relationship with God and trust that the fruit of that relationship will pour out some of these things into our lives. And when we're in a normal time, we can practice it. Um, we can work on it. We can try harder. We can look for opportunities. You know, it's interesting how it goes. If you pray for patience, right? A lot of times God gives you situations um, where you can practice patience. So he, he kind of goes both ways sometimes. Um, because God does want it to become part of us. And so what I'm saying this afternoon to all of you is that practicing and developing the virtues in your life, I'm praying for the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and practicing the Beatitudes will give you a foundation upon which to heal. Um, healing is encountering um, the love of God, in the depths of our hearts, in the places where we are broken, where we are weak, where we are hurting. And once we receive this healing love of God, and we need to integrate it into our lives. And the virtues help us to do that. And after receiving this healing love, there's going to be times when we feel like we want to go back. There's a temptation to go back to what we left. And in those times, um, we can pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We can go back instead to our relationship with God and trust that he will give it to us as a fruit. And we also can believe that living the Beatitudes um, is a way in which we can receive and integrate the healing um, God has given us. If you look on your sheet, some of you have a white sheet, some of you don't. There's, there are some more. Um, if we have any more, can we pass those out to those who don't have them? You can just raise your hand for a second. Some of them will come and give you one. Um, but I want to just leave you with this today. Um, I want to challenge you um, to look at these virtues, these gifts, these fruits, and ask yourself, what do I need in my life right now? And what you need in your life right now might be different than what you need a, a week from now or a month from now. Um, but what do you need in your life right now? If you were honest, like what is the one that kind of sticks out um, that you, maybe you're not practicing or maybe that you're really struggling with? Um, I would challenge you to think about that. 
Um, as well as, um, what's the beatitude that you find most challenging? And in that, you know, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> what are you going to do about it? How are you going to practice it? Um, how are you going to ask God for it? How are you going to increase and strengthen your relationship with him so that he can give it to you as a fruit? Because I believe not only does he want us to know about these things, um, but he wants us to receive them, um, integrate them into our lives. And as we do so, then when we receive um, his healing, we'll be able to hold on to it. We'll be able to integrate it into our lives. It will change us and we'll, we'll never be the same again. And so I just want to close um, with a little prayer. Heavenly Father, um, help me to learn to live a virtuous life. Heavenly Father, please bless me with a greater outpouring of your gifts and fruits in my life. Heavenly Father, please help me to live out the Beatitudes as Jesus did. Heavenly Father, help, help me to receive, integrate, and live out the healing you have given me. Amen. So Heavenly Father, we do pray for all these things today. We trust um, that you have a plan for us and that part of your plan is for us to grow in virtue and to receive your gifts and to live and receive um, the fruit of being in relationship with you, to live out the Beatitudes as Jesus taught them. And we pray for all that we need to do that. And we do this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.